The European Union is gearing up to tackle power waste with a focus on things like gaming consoles and speakers. What's going on here? The EU's move is part of a larger goal to boost energy efficiency and sustainability across Europe. Set to kick in by 2025, the new regulations aim to drastically cut down on standby power usage in electronics devices. So let's dive into what these regulations mean, why they matter, and how they impact both manufacturers and consumers. That's what we're talking about today. Let's gear up and dive in. Everybody's got a gaming console, smart speaker, or similar device these days, but not everyone knows that these devices can be energy hogs even when they're not being actively used. Standby power consumption, also known as phantom load or vampire power, very cool name there, is the energy the devices use when they are switched off or just hanging out in standby mode. Now, it may not seem like this is a big deal for a single device or a household full of devices, but when you add up all of the devices across the EU, for example, it becomes a significant portion of total electricity usage. Individually, standby power consumption can use such tiny amounts as one kilowatt hour per month. However, when millions of devices are in play, it adds up to a sizable chunk of electricity use. In developed countries, standby power can make up as much as 10% of total total electricity consumption. This inefficiency then leads to higher energy bills for consumers and more carbon emissions, which have ripple effects that aren't good for anyone or the planet Earth. The cumulative effect of standby power waste from devices used in standby mode is also often generated from non-renewable sources, contributing to greenhouse gas emissions and accelerating the rate of climate change. But it's not just the climate that takes a hit if the EU does nothing here. There are economic implications to inaction as well. Rising energy prices across Europe have increased the cost of living making energy efficiency a crucial factor in reducing household expenses. By implementing the regulations that the EU is proposing and going to implement, the EU aims to alleviate some of the financial burdens on consumers while also addressing environmental concerns. So the EU announced new standby powered standards actually in April of 2023, and they're set to go live on May 9th, 2025. So, Let's explore what they include in general. These rules will do a few things. One, they will introduce tougher requirements for devices in standby mode who are using that vampire power. Two, they will expand the list of products that are covered under these regulations. Three, they will ramp up testing and reporting process. Now here are some of the key features of what we can expect to come once these regulations are put in place. First, lower standby power limit. Currently, the maximum standby power for devices is one watt. The new rules will cut this down to 0.5 watts with plans to tighten it to 0.3 watts by 2027. Devices with screens that stay active in standby mode will have a slightly higher limit of 0.8 watts. Next up, networked standby power reduction. So devices with networked standby mode, which keeps a network connection alive, even when not in active use, will face new limits too. The current allowance is 3 to 12 watts depending on the device type. By 2025, this is going to drop to 2 to 8 watts. Next, let's talk about the broader product category coverage here. Now, the rules will cover more products like smart speakers, gaming consoles, motorized furniture, automated curtains. This expansion acknowledges that we all have way more smart devices at home, at work, in the bus stop, train station, they're everywhere. And this acknowledges that escalating energy impact brought about by these devices. So some examples of impacted devices here are gonna include televisions. Now limited to one watt of standby power, TVs will see this cut to 0.5 watts under the new standards. This could save about 3.65 kilowatt hour per TV each year, assuming 20 hours of standby daily. That's a lot. Smart speakers. So these devices currently use about two to three watts in standby mode, but they'll need to cut back to 0.5 watts or less. This change is expected to save about 17.5 kilowatt hour per year for each device. And then we get to gaming consoles. Now consoles currently use 10 to 15 watts in rest mode, but they are gonna be limited to two watts in networked standby. This alone could save about 100 kilowatt hours per console every year. Oh, hi, Joel here with a hair swish, like I'm a male model. Uh, I'm really glad you're here. I'm glad you're watching this video. 
If you want more hair swishes and more conversation about power usage and the modern electricity and power grids, go ahead and like and subscribe to the channel. All good? All right, back to our exploration of the EU's upcoming power waste regulations. So it's no surprise here that the regulations are gonna have implications for manufacturers and product designers. Let's talk about what those might be. The new rules are gonna have to push manufacturers to just rethink how they manage power and come up with creative solutions to meet these much stricter requirements. Product designers are going to need to revisit power supply units, integrate advanced sleep modes, uh, use ultra low power microcontrollers for improved standby functions, stuff like that. Balancing this performance and energy efficiency without sacrificing the usability is going to be key here. So manufacturers, in order to do that, are going to need to invest in research and development to design products that are going to meet these stringent standards without losing a bunch of stuff that we've all become accustomed to by using these devices. So this includes exploring new technologies and materials, crucially, that can provide energy savings without compromising on functionality. So for example, advancements in semiconductor technology, which is gonna be doing a long video about semiconductor technology on the channel here soon, be sure to subscribe if you wanna check that out, could lead to chips that require less power, thus reducing the overall energy footprint of electronic devices. I also think that the EU's regulations are going to actually spark innovation in low power and high efficiency electronics because what's the alternative? <laughs> People are just gonna stop making products and making money? That ain't gonna happen. Designers are going to need to develop new circuit designs and use the most energy efficient components available. So those who adapt well to these changes are going to get a competitive edge that maybe they don't currently have. So this shift toward more energy efficient products it's not just a regulatory challenge, but there's also a tremendous market opportunity here for whoever capitalizes on it. As consumers also become more aware of who is being environmentally conscious in this ecosystem, who's creating these products and not like throwing a big fit about it, there's going to be growing demand for the, the people who are making these products and the products themselves, especially if we can make sure that these products are both eco-friendly and cost-effective. So manufacturers who can capitalize on this trend by offering these innovative energy saving solutions are likely gonna see very much increased market share in the near future. So while we're on the subject of manufacturers and product designers and consumers and all that stuff, here's a big old question. Are there penalties for not meeting these standards? Well, not meeting the 2025 standards could lead to hefty fines and trading restrictions within the EU. These penalties are meant to encourage compliance and ensure that the rules have teeth so there gotta be some penalties. The EU is clearly committed to ensuring that manufacturers adhere to these new regulations and to facilitate this, they will implement a robust compliance framework that includes regular inspections, testing, and reporting. All very, very important if you wanna make sure that this stuff actually gets done. So this not only ensures that the products are gonna meet the new standards, but also promotes transparency and accountability in the market. So let's talk about the impact here, right? This is coming around the corner. It's almost here. What are we looking forward to? Well, the stricter standby power regulations are expected to reduce energy consumption pretty significantly all across the EU. By 2030, these new limits could cut power use by up to 32.5 terawatt per hour annually, saving EU consumers around 7 billion euros and reducing CO2 emissions by 4.6 million tons each year. Now, I know that all sounds like really large numbers here, but there are actually tangible benefits for both the environment and the economy coming with those really big numbers. Reduced energy consumption means lower carbon emissions, contributing to global efforts to combat climate change. And additionally, the financial savings for consumers can help alleviate those rising costs that we talked about earlier in the video, bring those living costs down, make energy efficient products more accessible to a wider audience. It's a win, win, win. This lower cost of living also frees up funds among those who have more disposable income, which is an obvious economic stimulant, assuming they inject it back into the economy. Now, the benefits of this have all been laid out, but what about the drawbacks? Well, obviously this evolution, it ain't free. While consumers may ultimately pay less in the long run, many businesses most certainly will not, and a lot of them will likely pass that on to the consumer in the immediate short term. Depending on the vector of the economy that we're talking about, some businesses may be severely impacted by the sudden requirement to invest in R&D, alter production, or manufacture processes, 
and much more. Opponents argue that forcing businesses writ large to adhere to these standards may cause them to make drastic changes, including staffing changes, which may go on to negatively impact the very people these regulations are the most specifically intended to help the general average consumer. But even those voices are relatively quiet here. Why? Well, here's the thing. First off, argument's over. These changes, they're already coming. Secondly, the attitude toward energy policy in the EU has been pretty different lately in a post-Russia invasion of Ukraine world. I'm gonna do a quick refresher here, but I got another video for you to check out if you want a deep dive to refresh your memory. There was something of an energy crisis in the immediate aftermath of the Russian invasion, which had many in the EU calling for a more dynamic, self-reliant power system. So fast forward a few years, and he got a set of proposals that will ultimately reduce the load on the power grid and thereby reduce the need to acquire power for that grid. And in the modern socio-political landscape, it's kind of hard to argue against those proposals. I actually did a pretty extensive deep dive into how the Russia, Ukraine, and also uh, war in Gaza conflicts have led to supply chain disruptions in a recent episode of the Circuit Pulse episode. So check that out if you want a little bit of a deeper dive, just as well as a general coverage of what the electronic supply chain is looking like in 2024. So the EU clearly remains a leader in energy efficiency here and environmental sustainability. By tackling standby power waste, the EU is taking a crucial step toward achieving its climate goals and promoting a more sustainable future. This leadership is not only about setting regulations, but also about fostering innovation and collaboration across industries. And we're really going to need that if we're going to get past the challenges of climate change. By working together with manufacturers, consumers, and policymakers, the EU will create a more sustainable future that benefits everyone. And the 2025 regulations that are going into place represent a huge step in that direction. The EU's upcoming crackdown on power waste in things like gaming consoles, TVs, and speakers is a pretty bold move, but it will help with energy efficiency. And these efforts are expected to lead to significant energy savings, lower carbon emissions, and more sustainable future for Europe, and hopefully, fingers crossed, beyond. So we talk a lot about issues relating to tech, climate change, and power consumption on this channel. So if you dig that, check out this playlist that just popped up for more. My name's Ben Joel. This has been Aquark. I'll see you.